Hello and welcome to Chalmers. My name is Diago and I'm a research robot. So we can like test functionality before we actually deploy it on the, on the real robot. Person detected within one meter, therefore I'm stopping. The Tiago by PAL Robotics is pretty much a test bench that you're able to use to test all kinds of different things. And we specifically, we are testing that navigation along with the camera. So for our case, we wanted to be able to recognize certain objects and do certain things depending on which object it is. I studied back in India. Uh, so I completed my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications engineering. So uh, the contents of the program, I really loved about it. So. I applied and, to my luck, I got it. I started with my automation and mechatronics bachelor's and after that you just choose a master's and I thought that systems controls and mechatronics was the most fun. I thought basically like robots definitely are the future for this, uh, for this world so it would be really good to have a hands-on experience on a robot. The biggest thing that happened like two weeks two ago, weeks ago yeah. uh, <laughs> randomly a single file on the robot got corrupted. Yeah. And because of that, the, the robot, robot was not able to no. navigate or start up properly. And then, you know, it took us like three days to yeah. figure. One day the diagnosis went, one day exactly what was the problem we figured out. The next day we found out the solution, implemented it. Yeah. Finally, to our luck, got, got it to work. We can start with the camera. Yeah, It's an uh, RGBD camera, which means it's a depth camera. And that is very useful. Because if we have depth, then we're able to detect uh, the distance to objects in front of it. The three sonar sensors, one over here, here and here. So it could detect, like, if I keep my foot over here, it could detect the distance between the foot and the sonar. So that is one thing. Mm. And the laser over here. That is pretty much the most important sensor. Because it's able to locate itself within the room that is in. Yeah. And without that, you couldn't navigate at all. So with the sensor, we're able to create the map of all the room it's in. And along with the computer, we can also say it to go to places within this map. So in our case right now, when it sees a human, it uh, stops if it is also within two meters of the human. And uh, it can stop completely when within one meter. Person detected within one meter, therefore I'm stopping. Well, at least what we work on is the navigation and able to detect which low room it is in. So perhaps warehouses, where it's able to navigate for specific things and it's also be able to avoid humans, which is very important. <laughs> Maybe uh, improvise a bit further with the uh, grippers, like grasping onto the objects more firmly, which we have not yet implemented so far. Could also work on the room recognition. Yeah. So it's able to like see if it sees a table, a chair, then perhaps it's in a living room. So you have the, the basic stuff of actually being able to like interact with your environment, chucking objects around, actually grabbing them. So uh, my name is Jesper. I create and maintain the digital twin, so to speak, of Tiago. So we can like test functionality before we actually deploy it on the, on the real robot. So this is mimicking how the, the robot would actually interact with its environment, picking up, up stuff and maybe even walk around and actually do interact with the environment. The good part about doing this in the digital twin, you can just, there's no, no risk of uh, destroying anything. Uh, in general, we need that safety when we actually deploy stuff on the real robot. Yeah. We, we need to know that it's not gonna make anything unexpected. We don't want it to run into the wall. It might damage other people, it might damage itself. Um, and this scene we have, it's the, uh, it's the old lab environment. Right now we're in the new one. Uh, but we will also have uh, like a kitchen scenario, uh, which would be a, a more like real life scenario where we actually want to train a robot uh, and experiment on actually like walking around the kitchen, um, opening drawers or uh, cabinets, and uh, moving dishes up into them, for example. It's another use case here. Uh, that is actually what we did in this bachelor thesis, uh, where we explored like, how, how could you not use necessarily Tiago, but similar robots, because Tiago is pretty, pretty, pretty weak, um, but to assist technicians in maintenance of trucks. 
uh, for example, when you're switching, switching tires and stuff like that. I just really love working in Unity. It's the game engine we're using to actually create the digital twin. I, I want Unity to be almost like a simulator. That, that's my big hopes. And also the human-robot collaboration. I want to actually participate in like creating uh, a, a really good system for actually hosting in that kind of environment. Maybe you, you hold something, you hold it up to Tiago, and Tiago reaches up and grabs it from your hand. Stuff like that, really, really fun.